So I have a question for you. How did our criminal justice system become one of the greatest injustices of our time? See, since at least the 1990s, our country's way of approaching the criminal justice system has been just two choices. You're either tough on crime or you're soft on crime. The result, it's a broken system. See, in recent decades, the country's seen an explosion in incarceration. There's more than two million people. That's four times the number of people that were incarcerated just in 1980. In the United States, we're about 5% of the world's total population, but we account for over 20% of the world's prison population. And what's worse, justice in this country is not applied equally. People of color are disproportionately affected. And in our country today, it's often better to be guilty and rich than innocent and poor if you happen to get caught up in the system. So in short, we see this as a moral issue, a constitutional issue, and a fiscal issue. But above all, it's a matter of human dignity. And it goes to who we are as a society and whether we're committed to truly making a difference in the lives of every person. For two decades, the Stand Together community has worked throughout society to help reform the broken criminal justice system. And we're starting to see some real progress. In education, we're working with more than 120 scholars to show a better way to reform the criminal justice system. The Academy for Justice at Arizona State University is equipping people with what they need to drive smart reforms when it comes to overcriminalization, better policing, or fixing mass incarceration. But simply having the research to drive reforms, it's not enough. The question is, how does that translate to actual changes in the criminal justice system? And that's where our work in the institution of government comes in. We help to bring together a broad, nonpartisan public policy coalition to pass the First Step Act, giving thousands of deserving people a second chance. This is a once in a generation reform at the federal level that a whole lot of people thought was impossible to achieve. This set the stage for reforms at the state level, where we've helped to implement 96 policy reforms in 27 states in just the last 18 months. The next step is helping deserving men and women re-enter society. And that presents a whole new set of challenges. Because one year after leaving prison, over half of those who have left are not employed. That's where business leaders can help to lead change. And that's why at Stand Together, we've activated more than 3,000 individuals to pledge to hire qualified candidates who have a criminal record. But how do we prevent people from being trapped in a system in the first place? Well, that's where our investment in strong communities comes in. We're investing in dozens of local organizations, empowering people to contribute and succeed no matter where they're coming from. Groups like Cafe Momentum, an award-winning restaurant in Dallas that's staffed almost entirely by people who are coming out of the juvenile justice system. They're just one of 29 community organizations that we support, helping people as they come out of prison to successfully re-enter society. This is what a comprehensive strategy looks like. We've got a long way to go, but that's how many people can unite to make real progress on criminal justice.